This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection and service. Hello everyone, this is Dimitri with Hardware Canucks and the trend for slimmer and more powerful gaming notebooks is only getting stronger and late 2014 saw a few gorgeous looking machines that pack a lot of gaming potential for those needing a mobile workstation. So Aorus, a sister brand from Gigabyte, emerged last year to wow everyone that finally seems to challenge competing offerings from Alienware and Asus, is added again with an insane spec sheet and has promised absolutely outstanding performance. This is the Aorus X7 Pro. At two and a half grand, you better expect all top of the line specs, and that's exactly the story. This is a 17-inch beast with 1920 by 1080p resolution. It's running a quad-core crystal well i7-4870HQ with turbo speed of 3.7 GHz, 16 gigs of RAM uh, with 1866 MHz speed and two 8 gig modules, dual 256 GB M SATA SSDs in RAID 0 for insanely fast read and write speeds. And to sum up this powerhouse, for graphics we're running NVIDIA GTX 970M in SO lie with 3 gigs of VRAM and uh, dual band AC Wi-Fi for all that seamless connectivity and online gameplay. The machine is impressively thin at 22.9 millimeters and for a 17 inch form factor uh, surprisingly light as well at 6.6 .6 pounds or 3 kilos. The top shell is metal with some minor but noticeable hints of gaming elements like these protrusions and uh, cross like silver coating at the front of the lid along with the silver or logo in the center that does not illuminate. I love the design elements of the exhaust ports at the back that also span the sides a little bit. And here we get some ports at the rear with two USB 2.0 ports and an AC power plug. The location of these two USBs is awesome for plug and forget devices. I for example kept my mouse and the portable DAC at the back to keep the sides clean. Coming around to the left side, there's a Kensington lock, gigabit ethernet, an HDMI and a VGA output for GPU number two, a lonely USB 3.0 and a dedicated headphone and microphone jacks. The front of the X7 Pro looks a little bare, uh, aside from the notification and activity lights on the right. Uh, and one thing missing is an optical drive, but this seems to be an obvious omission to keep the slim profile. Finally, on the right, there's an SD card reader, two more USB 3 ports, HDMI, and a mini display port for GPU number one. Opening the lid, we are presented with a gorgeous 17 inch 1080p IPS 60 Hertz display with a one megapixel uh, webcam and dual mics above with excellent viewing angles and awesome color and contrast. And we might question why Aorus did not include a high resolution panel on here considering the capable horsepower, but 1080p is that sweet spot for gamers and to keep up with reasonable performance levels, this was kind of an obvious choice. Despite how thin the screen panel is, flexing wasn't as terrible as I was expecting. However, this is a review model that has been passed around and I noticed a slight disattachment of the screen frame from the actual LCD in in one of the corners. So perhaps for the next model, a stronger and more reinforced frame should be considered. The interior of the X7 Pro is black aluminum that manages to hide any handling or sweat marks. The lit up Aorus power button is just subtle, but still, I haven't decided whether this is an eagle with an open mouth or an eagle with a flexing arm. So let us know which one you see first. And the surrounding ventilation is not a speaker, but acts as an intake port for the two fans inside. And in fact, the stereo speakers are spread on each side at the bottom and make sure to have a solid surface to balance the audio uh, with extra bass ports on the left and right with overall really weak projection. Uh, headphones are a definite must for this one. Let's take a listen. And moving on, the glass trackpad feels amazing. It's almost like navigating a touchscreen. 
However, the left and right clicks are extremely difficult to press. For some reason, the two finger tap is not available to imitate a right click and the tracking surface starts from the top of the center line, thus reducing the total useful perimeter of the touchpad. This is especially annoying when two fingers scrolling and as you pass the center line, tracking stops and that's uh, very annoying. The keyboard on the other hand is pretty much without faults. The scissor switch is awesome for typers. Bounce is quick and response time is fast. Although for gaming, I wish the keys traveled more. They just feel too flat. Keyboard flex though is not evident during normal use. The white backlight is nice, although no other color options available and this can be seen as a downside versus what the competition is offering. There is a bunch of shortcuts built into the top row F keys and media controls inside the arrows. The WASD zone has additional perimeter printing that is also revealed through the backlight and right within reach on the left are the added G keys that I must say add a whole lot of functionality to the keyboard with a list of preloaded functions and the macro hub to record your own functions if you wish or set those keys to open a specific app or games. The top G key cycles between the five profiles that are color coded and this macro implementation is outstanding without cluttering the keyboard nor the software. Looking at infrared imagery of the keyboard surface, there is not one particular hot spot around the hands. And that's really good to see as all the exhaust exits through the back and the sides, not spilling any heat to the areas you make contact with. Uh, there's that heat line in the middle as you can see, but uh, I never really felt that during gaming, so I shouldn't worry. It is impressive though what Aorus was able to achieve in such a thin chassis and the dual fans inside that cool the GPUs fully utilize those exhaust vents and the heat signature around the back is important to point out as this is not a machine for your lap. The bottom gets so hot even during winter you wouldn't want this anywhere but a solid surface. Now, Aorus permits access to the internals once the bottom plastic cover is removed. I was surprised to find this was not aluminum. Allowing users to swap RAM, there are a total of four slots, the dual M SATA drives right beside them, and install an optional 2.5-inch drive right beside the battery. That is proprietary, by the way, but still great to see this machine is configurable in a way. And finally, it's time to take this bad boy for a spin and see whether or not we've come to a point of true desktop replacement type performance. First of all, RAID 0 speeds are impressive, reaching almost 1 gigabyte per second for reads and staying in those high 700 megabytes per second for writes. When the stealth mode is active in the Aorus control hub, the CPU clocks are capped at 1.5 gigahertz, so expect a significant drop in performance, while the auto low and auto high both reach the 3.7 gigahertz turbo, no problem. I did all my gaming tests in SLI and maxing out everything I could and was completely blown away with the results I saw. Bioshock Infinite averaging at 144 frames is outstanding and played through Borderlands pre-sequel averaging at 136 frames with physics at high. Following Lords of the Fallen at 78 FPS looks absolutely gorgeous and so does Metro Last Light. I was surprised to see how well that performed with 66 average frames. Battlefield 4 at Ultra Preset with a field of view at 90 kept me uh, so close to 100 frames on average and Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor was also playable on the Ultra Preset. And lastly Crisis 3 on very high 8x MSAA uh, and still we hit 48 frames on average that delivered total playable settings with even smoother performance potential you know once you dial those settings to high or medium. However, all this performance means heat and you will find the X7 Pro loud, extremely loud on anything other than the stealth mode during gaming. This is also a good indicator of how weak the speakers are, letting the fans overpower the audio. Uh, you would require headphones for gaming for sure and also truly patient people around when the fans ramp up. So let's take a listen. All right, so this is what the machine sounds like when on idle. It'll most likely be dead silent. The fans don't kick in uh, unless you are watching maybe YouTube videos, uh, but generally browsing the web uh, and you're doing something on Word with anything in Microsoft Office, it will remain completely silent. But let's kick it into high gear, uh, launch some games, and you'll hear exactly how loud this thing can get.
And now let's launch a benchmark, see how fast the fans ramp up and uh, how loud they get. I'm holding the recorder about uh, the distance where your head would be if you were to use the laptop. One thing to note is because the, the exhaust ports are on the side and on the back, If you're placing the, the notebook against the wall, it will actually bounce all that audio back into you. I found that having some open space in the back is actually beneficial to avoid that bounce. And while I've never experienced any shutdowns with the CPU at 90 degrees, and one of the GPUs hitting a whopping 99 degrees Celsius while I was on vacation in Panama, but upon more testing on my return to Toronto, uh, GPUs barely hit 90 degrees Celsius. But still, Aorus needs to work out a better cooling system as such temperatures don't really reinforce confidence in hardware lifespan. Now with that said, I am happy to report no CPU nor GPU throttling even with such high temperatures and that is a very good feat to maintain consistent performance. Lastly, I did not even try to game on battery as this is not what the X7 Pro is designed to do. However, under balanced power state and stealth mode, I could squeeze easily over two hours of browsing time that really surprised and surpassed my expectations. So the Aorus X7 Pro is a very much needed machine to drive desktop replacement trend forward. It packs in a beautiful screen, incredibly compact and light form for its category, awesome keyboard with macros and performance that you would expect from a high-end desktop tower. However, the four elements that still need to be significantly improved is more efficient and quieter cooling, reinforced screen lid to avoid the LCD from popping out, better speakers and improved trackpad that feels fantastic to the touch but lacks the proper functionality. Now you tell us if this appeals to you as far as price to features to performance is concerned because performance is there but Aorus just needs to figure out and focus on execution of those other details that we've mentioned. But that concludes this review, thank you so much for watching, give us a like if you found it helpful, make sure to subscribe for more similar content and we'll see you in the next one.